In this video, I'm going to show you how we build these overhead lockers. I'm just preparing the overhead lockers, and in preparing these, I realise sometimes how involved some parts of the furniture are, especially stuff like overhead lockers, which I would consider structural, because you're going to, you know, load them up with food, clothes, uh, and they need to, they need to be solid in the van. They need to be secured properly. Basically, the overhead locker structure is a base which is routed out to take an inset light. And these are for a long wheelbase, so they're, they're six foot long lockers. So there's the last foot or so of the side panels taper in about, uh, you know, three quarters of an inch either side. So it's tapered there. We've got the end panels which are rebated to take this, which will be glued and potentially screwed, a couple of screws in there, but it'll be glued in into the rebate. We've got these birch ply sort of corner profile plugs. So it's a corner profile plug, which sits in a rebate, but also locates the corner profile aluminium. To, to give that a bit more rigidity. So this is the corner profile that, that we use. And this is gonna sit on the front of the locker. But there's always a bit of wobble. So in order to secure this, it gets fitted to the shelf, but it also gets pushed onto this locating block. So now, once it's fixed here, and it's glued here, there's no wobble at all. So, so that becomes part of the structure. So, got an end panel either side. This is scribed to the van, which is about 10 and a half degrees. So what we also need to do is take a scribe on the bottom of the locker so that that sits neatly against the back of the van as well. Because if we just keep it square, then coming out here, it's just going to look shit. You know, if you had a if you had a square lump of wood in there, it's going to stick. It's going to stick out. So, so that'll be cut with a fez saw at ten and a half degrees, so that we can marry it to that. Then we've got to go to our aluminium saw, chop two of these to length, fit them on, clamp everything up, and then we can start thinking about the locker dividers so we'll have two dividers this will be because it's six foot long we're going to have three doors so have three doors on it um, which need to be cut to the precise size uh, and then basically spacers that hold the center sections or the the locker dividers into position so that it's all square so hopefully take you through a a setup and then when it ends up in the van you can see where the the strength is gained it might be a bit of it is ott come on this is this is me we're talking about um so i'd rather over engineer something than have it fall down later on these are fairly substantial lockers once they're constructed they are lightweight ply um it's a 13 mil lightweight uh poplar ply poplar cord ply which is then laminated with um, a, a proper Egger high-pressure laminate. So ultimate result, very strong, very durable, but not actually that light. So when you consider the whole sheet, so a sheet of this probably weighs in finished at around about 24 kilos. Um, so it's not as light as the off-the-shelf lightweight ply, but then that has a much thinner covering. So lightweight ply off the shelf is probably about 22 kilos um, per sheet for a 15 mil finish. But you tend to end up with, a, that's probably a 14 to 15 mil board with a paper thin high pressure laminate on top. So fez saw on the edge, just like the user. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up.
And if you're interested in watching me build a van and indeed making cock-ups along the way and probably not hiding them from you, then hit the subscribe button because there's a lot more videos coming. Just got to adjust the angle to take the chamfered edge in as well. That one's now chamfered at uh, about ten and a half degrees. On this corner, <clears throat> it's more of an it's a slightly abrupt cor corner now, so I'll just uh, just wipe it over with a sanding block. Let's start looking at assembling one. So. I'm going to cut the, it's a three mil rebate on either side, so I need to cut the aluminium six mil less. One seven five two, one seven five two minus six mil, it's one seven four six. So my aluminium 1746 and this aluminium profile I've always got to check it because it just comes dented in random places which is a pain in the ass. but I've been dealing with that for the last 10 years so There's a mark there that I'd rather not have in the cut. So I'll make sure that that end gets cut off and there's probably little I can do with that anyway. So to cut the aluminium, we, we use a cheap evolution saw from Screwfix. You do go through the blades quite quickly. You'll notice when they get dull, but for about 60 quid, it's not worth buying anything else. The only thing you've got to do is mess around for five minutes, just getting it set up square. So, uh, I use a sharp pencil for this measurement because I want it to be fairly accurate. Okay, what we're doing here now is loading up the doors with the hardware. So these are all the doors for the um, the main rear overhead lockers. So fitting everything from the back. We've got our hinges. I always do like a little test fit with the screws just because the board thickness does vary a little bit. Um, if it's thicker, I can get away with a 5 8 which definitely gives a slightly nicer bite. Slightly thinner boards though and you definitely have to consider going down to a smaller screw. I've got a couple of line-up holes here, um, but I find the easiest way to make sure these are parallel is just push a straight edge against them and then they they sort of swivel themselves parallel anyway so if you haven't got markup holes just put the two in push a straight edge against them pushes them straight right that's the two hinges done just have a quick double check and make sure we haven't got any screw heads showing because they are quite close. We've got the side stay mounting point or mounting bracket. So that goes on. And then we've got the Evo catch that will go on here. I'm not sure if we're swapping these out to black at the moment, but... I haven't got any black, so I'm going to put the satin ones on for now. I always change the fronts.
And then once we've put the 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 once we've put the door front or the locker front onto the um, the carcass, what we'll then do is mount the stay. These are like a friction stay. I mean, they they work lovely, much better than um, a gas strut because you can adjust the tension so you can leave the door wherever you want so if you want to leave it open a little bit it'll stay open but you just alter the tension so that it's it's enough to keep the weight of the door up not cheap but nice and probably by the time you've got one of them a couple of hinges and a um and a catch not to mention the fact that we've got some custom made um aluminium latches for these to go on you're probably into 25 quids worth of hardware per door so it's it soon it soon adds up the cost of a conversion if you use decent quality components so that's another door finished three more to go and then we'll start putting them onto the putting them onto the locker dry fit them to the locker so that we can make sure everything lines up and latches smoothly out of the van. One overhead locker. Which is six foot long, so it's bloody huge. So the way this is gonna work, <clears throat> so I just wanna marry up the sides of the stays. So the stays are all on the sort of forward side of the locker. So that's the back of the van, front of the van. So I want these to go. And that's the other one. That's generally the position of them. The way we've spaced them is to allow two mil gap between them and at the ends. So I've got a two mil, two mil gap, two mil, two mil two mil um, and I just want to give myself the best chance of adjustment later on what I'm going to do before I fit these in position is just centralize all my adjustment on the hinge so that I've got left and right and in and out adjustment when it's in there if I put it if, if I the, this one for argument's sake is pretty much all the way in so if I put it in the van or in the locker like that, and then I want to adjust it once we're out, I'm knackered because I've only got backwards adjustment. So if I bring that to the middle, and these particular hinges have actually got a left and right sort of screw adjustment, so you can sort of twist them sort of left and right. So yeah, we'll adjust just all the hinges to the middle position, and that'll give us best scope of avoiding any fuck ups. That's the technical way of putting it. So at the moment I'm just loose placing these just to get, make sure I got my spacing right. They should be two mil apart. Might be a little bit tighter than two mil, which I don't mind. I don't want them. I don't want them any bigger than two mil. That's perfect. So I got four bits wedged in. So these are all good. When they're pushed in, they'll shut there. The front one is pushed onto the uprights, and this side of each end locker is pushed onto the upright. But I can push that end in. So in order to make sure that I've got a straight edge to follow here, what I'm gonna do is basically clamp a straight edge across there because I suspect these end lockers could move in a bit. I'm just grabbing the longest bit of straight edge that I've got. That looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna push that in. And a bit like doing the hinges, at the end of the day, if that's pushed in and all three bits are parallel to it, then they're straight. I don't have to worry about that. The only issue I have got here is that I want to try and get to the other side to put the screws in. 
and this this bench is in a shit position for that if i'm really honest with you so i'm gonna have to hang this over the edge clamp it and then move it it's not gonna be fun so if the camera goes off and you hear somebody crying then it's basically me because i've dropped it and broken shit not that that ever happens Oh no, 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 no. I've got adjustment on the hinges anyway, but I'm just trying my best at this point to make it as square as possible. Um, we shall commandeer the CNC for a bit. So now what I'm going to do, having pushed that in, having made these central i should be able to go into each of these holes basically put the screws in here which will the hinges shouldn't move as long as i don't pull them backwards Right, hinge is done. So our spacer can come off. Normally, you know, you've got them fairly good if they don't sort of clash when they do that. Sometimes they, sometimes they do clash, but I'd say that doesn't need any adjustment at all. Maybe I'm just gonna drop, I might just drop all the doors to close the gap up at the bottom or make the bottom and top gap even certainly you know on this one that's a little bit more than two mil yeah a bit less than two mil at the top a bit more at the bottom so the doors can come down a bit and that'll probably help them hit their catches as well so next step i'll put the door catches on the next little bit of the puzzle now is our brackets. Um, it's something we like using this um, Remo profile across the front. And in order to use that with the Evo catches, we've had our own brackets made up. We have them made in small batches and they're hand milled. Um, but that's what they look like. A friend of ours um, machines them up by hand. So... They're not cheap and they're not something we supply. So that's just gonna go under center of the lock, hold it in place, drill, put a screw in. I suppose this highlights the joys of converting vans. What you tend to end up doing, I suppose a bit like the major manufacturers, they have their own, they have their own sort of series of components which are peculiar to their brand and even as small converters end up having to have stuff custom made all the time because you want to achieve a certain way of doing it and it's not just the furniture but you're, how can I say it, you're, you're trying to find a way of doing the job and even just that one little bit of metal that you need machined or you need something 3D printed, you know, and it's normally beyond what you can do, you know, yourself in your own workshop. So, you, you know, you end up sort of sourcing things out and, we, and we're lucky we've got a couple of like friends of ours that are, you know, engineers and they can machine stuff like that. We've got people that we know that can fiberglass stuff for us. <laughs> So anyway, I won't film the end one, but you get the gist. Three of those, we can then spin it around and put the 
stays on the door. This is fitting the lights. So we've got these uh, single LEDs that go in a 35 mil hole. Basically, we put a, a channel because this overhead locker is designed to sort of squeeze up against the ceiling. And we've got a channel in it just to protect the wire. They are a snug fit. Two arms, please. And now that won't get jammed against the, the roof. Three of these to go in each one. What we're trying to do is basically make the locker self self-sufficient. That's, that's the wrong word for it. Um, sort of make a standalone locker, if you like. So when the locker goes up, um, it doesn't, you know, we can leave the, you'll see it when we come to fit in the lockers. But basically the, the back or the locker back, which is carpeted, slips in and then hides access to the wiring. But that'll pretty much be offered in like that with the doors off so that we can maneuver it and put the screws in. The wires will just be hanging down the back because they're tucked in at the back of the uh, at the back of the unit. However, what we've got to do is put the light strips in. The LED strip that goes in them is about three weeks away from being delivered because um, that was out of stock, but it's quite a unique specification and we can't really, re well, we can't replace it with anything. So we're hanging out for that, but we're gonna put our strip in because we've just had the touch sensitive dimmer switches delivered and the dimmer switch has to go in with the wire in and with the trunk in but the light can be, light can be put in afterwards. We can't can't wait for the light to fit. Otherwise, this van is going to be later than it already is. Right. So that's the sorry, that's the catch that holds the other end of the um, locker state. I'm going to put one in now. I'll put the rest in when it's in the van because I'm going to be taking the doors off to do that. Right. So that's a locker stay in. Well, that pretty much wraps up making the locker. In the next video, I show you how to fit the lockers and make them strong enough that they'll actually take my own weight hanging off them.